over here at another hotel. That feels fire, dude. So as far as Martin Transport goes, I fucked up really good. Not like I didn't damage nothing, but I still fucked up. Just outside the hotel picking up some Uber Eats. It's cold out here in Portland, dude. So I got kind of cocky and I didn't really study my pre-trip. The last time I did a thorough pre-trip was like two and a half years ago, dude. All right, so this is what happened. I was doing the pre-trip and I was doing really good, right? Isn't that how it always goes? You're doing it really good and then there's something that you fuck up on and then you fail, right? <laughs> so I was doing everything, right? You know, my slack adjuster should have, you know, no more than three quarter of an inch of play. You could argue a three quarter of an inch to an inch of play from what I remember at England, it was three quarter of an inch play. My steer tire should have four thirty seconds. And the, you know, the rears and the tandem to the drive axles and the tandem should have two thirty second inch tread. Everything, right? Shock absorbers, the um, leaf springs, U-bolts, um, gearbox and the steering column, everything, right? And he said I was giving him a real thorough pre-trip. And there was a few things that I missed. Like, he went into a lot of detail on the fuel water filter, right? The, the fuel water separator. And But what fucked me up is when I went inside the truck. And, oh, God, this is so embarrassing, dude. No, the last time I did a thorough pre-trip like this, because the only other time you do a thorough pre-trip like this is if you're going to get canned and safety is doing a pre-trip with you. The last time I did an in-depth pre-trip like this, or with DOT maybe, was two and a half years ago. So I got cocky. I got ahead of myself. I thought I didn't have to study. So I was on the phone with this chick last night <laughs> instead of studying my pre-trip like I should have. And I forgot what the P and the S stood for on the air gauge. Right? And this was an older Freightliner. My air gauge was in front of me. And looking back on it, yeah, there was a blue needle with the S, and that was for your secondary tank, and the white main needle, that was for your primary tank. And hear me out on this. So I told him, he asked me, oh, what does this air gauge stand for? And I told him, well, isn't that for your airbags, right? And I got that correct. They said, all right, what are these two air gauges for? And I said, well, these are obviously for your air brakes. He said, wrong. He said, and then eventually, you know, he gave me like 20 chances. I was like, well, the only other thing that takes air on this truck is your airbags and your air brakes. I don't know what else takes air besides the air conditioning or whatever, right? But that's the, um, that's the AC pump. And he said, no, this is for your air tank, your primary and your secondary air tank. And I said, okay, yeah, but don't those feed the air brakes? So if I do an air brake test right here, I'm going to be looking at my primary needle, right? I didn't say that, right? But I'm going to be looking at this needle. And I pointed towards the one with the P, right? And he asked me, what does the P and the S stand for? And that I forgot. So that was a point, okay? That's not exactly what fucked me up because he gave me another chance after that. What fucked me up was this. I hooked up to the trailer and I made sure my fifth wheel was at the proper height to where I was gonna slightly lift up the trailer like you guys always see me doing in my CR England vlogs, right? To get the landing gear off the ground to make it easy to crank up. I got out of the truck and I looked at my, um, my fifth wheel, my fifth wheel lock and draw to make sure it was wrapped around the kingpin. I even borrowed his flashlight to make sure Made sure my handle was in, and um, I did forget to do a tug test, right? I was literally about to go in and do a tug test. But first, like, at England, I never really did tug test. I would always hook up to the trailer and get out and look, and look at the fifth wheel. That's what I would do. And if I saw that my locking jaw was across the kingpin... Then I knew I was good, and I saw my handle was in. I knew that I was good. Near the end of it, I started doing tug tests or whatever, and you guys seen that. But that's not what failed me, right? That was another point. That was another point, but that's not what failed me. What failed me was this. This is when he said you failed the test, okay? 
I, I hooked up my electrical line from my tractor to the trailer and had my four-way flashers on, okay? And then I saw that on the trailer, this happens. This happened all the time. You guys seen this on my Walmart vlogs at CR England, how the left side wouldn't be flashing, but the passenger side would or vice versa and had to go to the shop to get it fixed before I head out on the highway. That's what happened with this trailer. I had my four-way flashers on, and the right side was flashing along with my cab. And I even said it, right? All of my lights should be amber all around except for the rear, which should be red. And I should have my, um, my headlights and my high beams working as well. And I had my flashers on. And I said 20 times, like, okay, this left side, it's not flashing, right? This turn signal is not working. It's illuminated, but it's not flashing. And I got my four-ways on. And then I went to the rear and I checked the turn signals in the back, the red ones on the top and the bottom, and they weren't flashing. The right side was, the passenger side was, the driver's side wasn't. And I repeated this 20 fucking times because I was trying to fix it. I turned off the four ways and I tried to just do the turn signal, turn the lights on and off. Um, and for some reason, it just wasn't working. In the, in the England Freightliners, this was an old Freightliner that I did the pre-trip on. Whether I had the lights on and off when I hooked up and I had my four-way flashes on, the, the four ways were on the trailer at that point. It didn't matter if I had my headlights on and on. Obviously, I meant to say on or off, not on and on. Quick edit. If I had the four ways on, the trailer was on. And then I opened up the door. I, I completed the whole pre-trip in detail, right? As he said. And he was like, okay, so are we good to go? Are we ready to go drive? And I asked him, well, that's up to you. And even when I said that we have to take this through the shop before we leave, he said, you failed the test, right? When I said, it's up to you. He asked me, are we good to go drive? And I said, well, that's up to you. He said, well, you got, I got bad news. You just failed the test. He said, I asked you if we're good to go drive. And you said, yes. And we have flashers on the left side of the trailer that aren't working and you just said that we're good to go drive so you failed the test right and that's obviously not what I said I said it's up to you then when he said that I was like well yeah because before we leave the yard it's Martin policy that we go through the shop and get a pre-trip done at the shop before we head out right that's their policy before you leave a Martin yard you're supposed to take your unit your tractor and your trailer your combo through the shop so they can check it out to lower, you know, just to keep the CSA scores in check, right? And I told him, yeah, well, yeah, when we leave, we're going to go to the shop. So they're going to fix it. He said, no, that's not what you said. You said we're good to go. So you failed the test. <laughs> he gave me a break on forgetting what the P and the S um, stood for on the air brake gauges, right? Which is two. I'm used to just having one with a blue needle and a white needle. But there was two because was, this was an older truck. Um... He gave me a break on forgetting to do a tug test. I went in and I, when he said I forgot to do a tug test, I went in and did the tug test, right? But he gave me a break on that because I got out and I looked. As soon as I hooked up, I got out and I looked. I went under the trailer like you're supposed to. Those of you who say you're only supposed to do a tug test, no, you're supposed to get out and look under the trailer with the flashlight and make sure that you're wrapped around the kingpin with your fifth wheel locking jaw, which I did. And that's, I'm guessing that's the reason why he gave me a break on that. I repeated myself. I told him, well, yeah, we were going to go through the shop. He just said, you failed. And I didn't want to argue with him. I was professional the whole time. I said, okay, that's fine. No worries. Just like that. I didn't raise my voice. There was another guy that got canned because something else. I'll just tell you right now. When you do their pre-trip, they'll fail you for not pulling out, manually pulling out the fifth wheel handle because they got a button in the cab that releases it. But, and there's no need to even back off the fifth wheel like I used to do at England. No, no, no. It, you actually want some pressure on the fifth wheel so it could release because it needs some, like, air pressure or whatever. Um, but, yeah, if you don't manually take off the handle, right, pull it in the outward position, then they'll fail you. It's an automatic fail. And the other guy, I guess he failed for that because he used the button in the cab instead of getting out and pulling the handle, which sucks, dude, because it sounds like he passed everything else. But he got let go for that. They sent him home this morning. And then right now, I'm in the hotel room. And I'm on my way back home. So, 
yeah, it's no knock on Martin. I have my own opinions on certain things that might just have to do with this yard because of where it's located. Um, I don't know if some of y'all could pick up on what I'm putting down. If you do, then if you get what I'm saying, then you probably understand where I'm coming from. Um, but I don't like to blame things on that because I like to be in control. If I fuck something up, I want to be in control. I want to be the one that fucks it up. I never want to blame things on outside reasons, you know, but the way that this dude was and just the environment that Wilsonville is, there's always a thought in the back of your mind, like, is it that? Because you, cause you never know. And you. I hope that I'm wrong because I'm not like some like left-wing victim who's out there protesting or whatever. No, 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 no. But at the same time, I'm, I'm not a fool. I know that that shit exists, right? And I was the only one of my kind in that building. Everyone else was, you know what I mean? So that could be it. Especially being, I, I think the last part was kind of petty. I should have studied for the pre-trip. I should have, right? I got everything pretty much down, right? I forgot what the P and the S stood for, but I knew it was for the air brakes. If it's for the air, um, if it's for the, like, the air cylinders, whatever, like, the tanks, I mean, yeah, if it's for the air tanks, the purpose of the air tanks is to feed the air brakes, right? So that right there, it's kind of petty. It's like, well, yeah, I know that there's air tanks, but they feed the air brakes. So if I say this is for the air brakes, I don't know. That could be argued. Maybe I'm wrong, right? And again, I remembered my lane departure, um, the menu button for the dash. It was on the side of the dash. And um, what else? My trailer, inner axle lock. I forgot what the P and the S stood for. I forgot what the engine override was. Um, I, I remember, I remember that it was engine override, but I just forgot what it was in detail. I mean, he went into the complete detail on the engine override, right? Um, he asked me a question on a region, on the engine region, and this is what I told him. I left out of one little thing that he didn't like. I told him the engine region is to get rid of particulate matter and to clean out soot out of the diesel exhaust pretty much because that's what it would say on the Freightliner dash something to that something to that effect and he accepted that he said but that's not the only thing like what he asked what are the conditions that need to be met for an engine regen to start and I said you got to be parked you got to have your brakes on and you got to be idling you can't be in gear and that was it and he I, f I forgot to say that it, you know the engine has to be warmed up Obviously, and the reason why I forgot that is because we always idled our trucks at freight uh, at at CR England. Our freight liners were always idled, always because we didn't we didn't have APUs, so the regens would just happen. They would just automatically happen. Only every now and then you would have to do a manual regen. And I told him I know what a manual regeneration is. You go in either on a button or you go into the the computer on the dash and do a manual regen, right? But that was the point. That was the point, right? I knew what a regen was. I knew how it worked, but I forgot that the engine has to be warmed up. Obviously. Obviously, right? And, yeah. So, I should have studied the pre-trip more. But here's the thing. That's not why he failed me. That's not why he failed me. He failed me for the lights when I repeated it. But yeah, so that was Martin Transport. In and out. And one more thing. I feel like maybe this happened for a reason. My grandpa is really old. I lost my grandmother about a year ago now. And my grandfather is the only one that's left as far as those two go. My grandma, my grandpa. He's so old that he could go at any minute. He's in good health, but he's so old, bro. He's almost 90 years old. Again, I wanted to throw this in there on the edit. My siblings, they kind of turned their back on their mom. They all got their reasons, you know what I mean? I'm the only one that kind of, want to say, looks out for the certain family member.
that just needs help because this family member isn't in a position to do for themselves. Um, I'll say that like they're handicapped, you know what I mean? And this family member just needs an eye, needs an eye on, on her from time to time, you know what I mean? Which is a sibling, and I'm the only one that does that um, when it counts, so you know, when she needs help, right? I don't want to get into too much detail. I'm thinking maybe it's not a good idea for me to go over the road, like, be gone for all this time. Anyways, maybe it's a good idea that, you know, just for the time being, until, you know, we see what's going on with my grandfather, pretty much him, because when, you know, when he goes, that's when this family member can finally, like, move, right? I don't want to get into too much detail, but I'm kind of needed at the house right now. Or not at the house, obviously. Get my own spot, whatever. But around. Definitely needed around right now. And here's the thing. If you're a truck driver and you're over the road, ask yourself, are you needed at home? Are you needed? You know what I mean? Should you be going, like, out hella far and only coming home once a month or once every two weeks? If you're in that position, hey, by all means, go do it. But if not, yeah, maybe some of us need to do these local jobs. You know what I'm saying? So maybe this was a good thing. I should probably stay in California and do like a lot of you guys said and just get a local job. Maybe I should stop being hard-headed and just get a local job, right? Martin Transport seems like a good company. They pay for a lot. Your detention, breakdown, layover, holiday. Um, they got like the little performance bonus. But maybe they do micromanage you. I mean, if this was the guy that they had doing the road evals, then that speaks volumes of the company of probably how they do it. And it's not just me that said that they might be strict. Another driver that was in our group, the one who actually got hired, you know, this Hindu dude who got hired, um, that was the first thing he said, like, yeah, they're kind of strict. He said most companies that he worked for, you know, you do a pre-trip, they give you the truck, you know, do your road eval, which is like probably go on the freeway, two exits down, turn around, come back. They give you the keys to the truck and they say, handle your business, get the job done. Don't fucking... You know, get hours of service violations, don't get pulled over, don't speed, but do the job. So, yeah. I still recommend Martin Transport if you're going to go study the pre-trip. Don't get too cocky like I did. The last thorough pre-trip I did was two and a half years ago. But, yeah, I think what it was, because, again, I like to be in control. I fucked it up. I don't want to believe that someone intentionally did something to me. I'm the one that fucked it up. You know what I'm saying? Because once you start blaming outside sources, then you're giving away your power as a man. So I fucked up. I should have stayed the pre-trip more. I got ahead of myself. I got too cocky with it. But at the same time, there's always that chance that maybe, maybe that was the case, right? So yeah, be sure to smash the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel. And that was getting fired from Martin. Like I said, this is my life on video. Um, you get authenticity here. I'm not one of those fake YouTubers. It's always like, oh, hey, guys, I'm going to give away a million dollars today to the girl that works at McDonald's. Like, no, 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 no. Right? This is my life on video. It's a real vlog. And there's no knock on Martin. Right? Even if it was that, it was just this person. Right? Maybe a few people. But no, I feel like it was just this guy. If it was that, then it was really just this guy. Because everyone else there seemed really decent. Um, yeah. Peace out.